Good morning. It's great to be here with you all today. I'm Pastor Nathan. Welcome here to Christ the King Lutheran Church. If it's your first time with us today, me too. I'm thankful to have the chance to share God's Word with you today. Before we begin our service, I just want to want to say a couple things. First, you're going to notice that I'm not Pastor Mark or Pastor Reed. You're especially going to notice because I play as many musical instruments as there are giraffes in the room here with us today, which is zero. And so I hope that you don't have expectations that I'm going to be one of your former pastors because I'm not, and I'm not going to try to pretend to be somebody who I'm not either. But I want you to know that that works the other way too. You're not the members that I've had at any of the other four congregations that I've served either. And so I'm going to try not to have expectations for you that you're going to be like somebody whom you're not. And my prayer is that with time and certainly with God's help, we can get to know each other well. And I'm looking forward to serve as your pastor. Of course, with all the changes, there is one thing that, that doesn't change. And that's Jesus and his word and his love for us. And so it's a blessing to, to read Jesus' word today. And know that in the midst of all the things that are changing in our lives, even in our congregation, that Jesus, our Savior, is the one who always stays the same. Of course, today is, is Father's Day, and so in our service, we're going to talk about fathers, especially about our Heavenly Father, about our God and His love for us. When I plan a service, I always like to have a verse that serves as a, a summary, a, a highlight of what the service is going to be about. And you can see it if you open up your service folder on the top of page four. It says, we gather for worship, and then there's the verse of the day. It's 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. This will be the, the theme of our worship service today. Please join in, in reading that verse together with me. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. We'll join in singing our opening song, Children of the Heavenly Father. Please stand. Join in confessing our sins to God with the words on page 5. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The Bible tells us this truth about ourselves. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But then the Bible gives us this promise about God's grace and forgiveness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 
On Father's Day, we especially remember God's command to us in the fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. God commands us to honor and respect our fathers and mothers and all those he has placed in positions of authority over us. So today we confess to God our sins against this and all his commandments. Sins of disobedience and disrespect toward our parents and grandparents. Sins of failing to carry out our own responsibilities as parents and leaders. Sins of seeking our own good instead of the good of those around us. Sins of dishonoring those whom God has put in authority over us. Take a moment of silence to each privately confess our sins to our Father. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. God, our Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given his only Son, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. For as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the song of praise. To God be the glory. first lesson from God's Word this Father's Day is from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy chapter 6. The Bible commands us fathers to to bring up our children in the training and instruction of the Lord. In these verses, Moses, long ago, gives some examples of how God's people could make God's Word a part of their daily lives. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. 
Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is God's word. One way that we Lutherans have been taught to have God's word in our homes is through Martin Luther's small catechism. We have confirmation classes at our church, but the goal isn't just for 7th and 8th graders to learn about God. The goal is for all of us to be using God's word in our homes. I have here a part of Martin Luther's small catechism. If you remember from confirmation class, he would have the commandments and then explain what they mean. And so here's the fourth commandment and the what does this mean in the words of Martin Luther. Let's Let's read the whole thing together. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not dishonor or anger our parents and others in authority, but honor, serve, and obey them and give them love and respect. The Gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. It's the the story of the prodigal son, a parable that Jesus told. Although when you hear the story, the name prodigal son isn't really a good name for this parable. It's really a, a parable about the father's love. We usually stand for the Gospel, but this is a, a long Gospel lesson. And so you can stay seated and listen to Jesus tell us about God our Father's love for us. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, they replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is God's word. For our next song, we're going to sing a, a song about God, our Father's love to us. 
It's a song that, that might be new for you. As far as I know, everything's new for you. I've never been here before. I have the, the music printed out for you on pages 9 and 10. I know some people don't like to read music, so if you, if you look on page 11, there's also just the words of the song printed out. If that helps you, you follow along better. We'll join in singing together how, how deep the Father's love to us. And, and note that, that during the third verse, the young children who are here today are invited to, to come up to the front and sit here on the front step and, and we'll have a, a children's devotion after we're, we're done singing the, the song. So we'll sing the song together. I see a few kids coming up. That's great. Don't be scared. I'm not as scary as I look. You can come right up on the steps if you want a place to sit down. Good morning. It's great to see you guys today. Thanks for being here. You guys probably know that I'm new, right, at our church. So one of my first jobs is I have to get my office set up. Do you know I have an office, a little room over here? It has lots of books and things like that in it. So this week I was setting up my office, and this is one of the things that I put on my desk. Everybody's got to try to look at this. Can you see this? Who do you think is in those pictures? It's my kids. You're right. It's a picture that I hold on my desk and it's got my kids. It, it actually isn't updated. It just has two of the kids. I love the other two also. But for now, there's just two of the kids. My older sons, Isaiah and Samuel, are in these pictures. Why do you think I have on my desk pictures of my kids? Because I love them. Exactly. I bet your moms and dads at your houses have some pictures of you guys too, because your parents love you too. And that got me thinking, what if God in heaven had an office? 
I don't know if he does. He's got everything that he needs, right? Heaven's kind of like God's house. Imagine that God had an office. Whose picture do you think would be on God's desk in his office? Can you take a guess? I think I know whose picture would be there. Everybody's. Yours. Do you know why that is? Who are God's children? Everybody, everybody who believes in Jesus and has been baptized is a child of God. And so I imagine if God had an office up, up in heaven, and if he were to have a picture on his desk, he would have your picture because you're God's child and God loves you too. And isn't that a nice thing to know? On Father's Day, we're thankful that our dads love us. But we can be even more thankful that we have a heavenly father who loves us too. And so when you guys look around your houses and you see pictures of you kids because your parents love you, every time you do that, I want you to remember in God's house, he's got pictures of you too because he loves you very much too. Can we say a prayer about that? Can you fold your hands and bow your heads? And we'll say a prayer. Dear Lord God, on Father's Day, we, we thank you for our fathers here on earth. But we thank you even more that you're our heavenly Father and that you love us very much. Help us never to forget that we are your children and that you're our good, good Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being brave and coming up here today. You can go back with your parents and sit back in your seats. Our final lesson for God's Word today and the lesson for our sermon is from the New Testament from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is God's word. Dear friends in Jesus, during the month of May, I had the chance to visit 12 different churches to get ideas for, for our ministry here. Remember that on, on Mother's Day, I found myself in a huge non-denominational Christian church up where we lived in, in Wisconsin. There had to have been over a thousand people there. There was great music. There were all sorts of kids' activities. And, and the pastor came out and, and talked just to the moms on Mother's Day. She said, I don't care what anybody else says. You're a great mom because you're trying your best. And everybody nodded. Amen. You're a great mom because you're trying your best. So that made it easy for me, for my Father's Day sermon. Dads, you are great dads because you're trying your best. Amen. Except, do you know how often in the Bible it says, try your best and you're good? Zero times. That is our, our false American religion. Just work hard, try your best, and you're good. That's not what the Bible says. It's not the Bible says things like we heard in, in our lesson. Dear friends, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. The Bible doesn't just say, try your best. The Bible is a whole lot more specific. It says, love. Love with God's love. Dads or moms or any human being, let us love one another with God's love. God's love puts that other person first. Always. God's love is willing to sacrifice everything. God's love is willing to fill the needs of that other person regardless of the cost to yourself. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Have you loved like that? I have to admit for myself, I could have done better. I can't stand up here today and say I've tried my best. I, I could have done better. God's love always says to that other person, you first, you first. But instead of saying you first to my kids, often I do all of my things first and then I give them whatever time is left over. I could have done better. God's love is willing to sacrifice everything. But instead of that, I'm usually waiting for other people to sacrifice things for me. I could have done better. God's love fills the needs of everyone, regardless of the cost. That I usually find myself complaining that the people around me won't fill my needs the way that I want them to. Let's love one another with the love that comes from God. I could have done better. I sinned. That's why, dads, I'm not going to stand up here today and say to you, you're a great dad because you try your best. Because what about the days when you don't try your best? What about the days when your sinful heart gets the better of you? What about the days when you make the wrong decisions and you say the wrong words and you do the wrong things? What about those nights when your conscience says to you, you could have done better? You could have done better. Then what? If being a good dad or being a good person depended on me doing the right things, then I'm in trouble because I haven't and I don't and this is serious because in the next verse our, our lesson says whoever does not love does not know God oh they're strong words makes me think of when when Jesus said by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love is to be the sign that people are, are Christians. I can know the Bible backwards and forwards, but if I don't love other people, I don't know God. I can come to church every Sunday, but if I don't love other people, I don't know God. I can work harder than everybody else, but if I don't love other people, I don't know God. And who here today can sit here and say, I'm a good person because I try my best? No way. We all could have done better. We've sinned. And whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Have you heard those words before? I think that they have become the most popular verse in the Bible. God is love. This is where it's from, from 1 John chapter 4. But as much as everybody says them, I, I hope that you never take those three little words for granted. God is love. Did you know that this idea that God actually loves people is unique to Christianity? In, in all the ancient religions, gods did not love people. God gave out favors when people did the right things. Have you heard of the, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle? He's one of the, the famous Greek philosophers, even before the time of Jesus. Aristotle once said, it is impossible that God should love. Gods don't love people. Except the God of the Bible, the true God. He's different. He doesn't just love 
Sometimes. He doesn't just give out favors when you do the right things. God is love. Isn't that beautiful? Just that you know the devil, he likes to take the beautiful things that God says and twist them. He likes to take the, the beautiful things that God says and make them into excuses for us to sin. And that is why God is love has become the most popular verse in the Bible today. It's because the devil is twisting it to give us an excuse to sin. I think you know what I mean. God is love, so I can have sex with anyone I want to whenever I want to. God is love, so I can live my life my way, and you better not say anything about it. God is love, and so you dare not tell me that what I'm doing is wrong. God is love. No. No, those ideas come from the devil who's twisting God's word to try to pull us away from God. Watch out. Because this is what it means that God is love. The, the Bible explains it for us. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God is love doesn't mean that God just sits back and lets us do whatever we want. How would that be love? God is love means that God put his love into action. When God saw our sin, he couldn't just sit still. No, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Who is God's one and only son? It's Jesus. God sent Jesus into the world so that we might live through him. Now, on, on Father's Day, imagine this kind of love. For you who have children, would you be willing to send off one of your children to die for a group of wicked, sinful people who had hurt you a thousand times over? Would you do that? No, I, I, some of you are looking at your kids and you're ah, I don't know. <laughs> no way. You would never do that. But that's what God did. He sent his one and only son for us. God is love. That's what that means. And the next verse tells us what Jesus did for us. It says, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Life isn't about us doing anything. Life is about what Jesus has done for us. Life is not about your working hard or your trying hard or your loving well. Life is about how God loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice for our sins. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And this is so important because the day is going to come when you're not able to do anything at all. And it's going to be okay. Because your life doesn't depend on the things that you do. Your life depends on Jesus. And Jesus is the atoning sacrifice, not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Do you understand what that means? In just about every service, we talk about Jesus being the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Do you know what that means? What's an atoning sacrifice? Well, hundreds of years ago, a, a guy, a pastor, was translating the Bible from Greek into English for the first time. And he came to this section in 1 John where we hear about how sinful we are, how our sins have separated us from God, but about how Jesus, in his great love for us, sacrificed himself to forgive our sins and bring us back together with God. And this man realized that there was no English word to say all that. And so he decided to create a new word. English needed a new word. And so he came up with the word atonement. It's just that we don't pronounce it the right way. It's at one -ment. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice. He's the, the at one sacrifice. He is the one who with his blood shed on the cross forgave our sins 
and made us one with God. He's the, the at one sacrifice. Do you understand? It means that you're forgiven. It means that God is your loving Father, that you are God's loved child. And now, I want you to compare these two different ways to look at the world. The world says, you are good because you try hard. God says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The world says, if, if you work hard, you'll find success. But God says, while well, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The world says, good people deserve good things. The Bible says, by grace we've been saved, through faith, and this not from ourselves. It's the gift of God. Can, can you see the difference? Life is not about what you do, it's about what Jesus did. God is love, and he proved it when he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And so for Father's Day, dads, when you try your best, Jesus loves you. But on all the days when you could have done better, Jesus loves you. And moms, on those days when you feel like you're the best mom in the world, Jesus loves you. And on the days when you feel like you're the, the worst mom on the face of the earth, Jesus loves you. Because it's not about you. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us for kids of all ages, right? We're all kids. On the days when you feel your parents' love, Jesus loves you too. On the days when you don't feel your parents' love, maybe your parents have been long gone, Jesus loves you. And nothing that you do or you don't do can change that. Jesus loves you. So, dear friends, the Apostle John writes, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's the second time that, that John writes those words, dear friends, and it's really a cool phrase because in, in Greek, the, the phrase dear friends really says loved ones. And so what John really writes is this. He says, loved ones, love when you see how much you're loved by Jesus, by the God who is love, that's what enables you to love other people, loved ones, love. And in fact, our, our lesson ends by saying that no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is made complete in us. In other words, nobody can see God, but when Christians show Christ-like love to each other, People see Jesus in us. Isn't that cool? So loved ones, since God so loved us, we also ought to, to love one another. That makes me think about Will Rogers. I've been trying to learn all I can about Oklahoma, which means I saw a snake this week, I've killed like a million spiders, and I've read about Will Rogers. What's left? Do you know the most famous saying of, of Will Rogers? He's known for saying, I never met a man I didn't like. You heard that before? I never met a man I didn't like. When I read that, I thought, isn't that the attitude that God wants to give us as, as Christians? I never met a person I didn't like. Of course, that, that saying isn't really true, at least for me, because I've met all sorts of people that I haven't liked. But, but Jesus changes that. When I see Jesus' love for me, that makes me want that saying to be true in my life. I never met a person I didn't like because of Jesus. This past Friday, I visited our, our member, John Christ, who's recovering after having a, a stroke. 
And when I was talking with, with John, he, he told me a story. He said, when, when I was in the hospital, and John was in the hospital for weeks and weeks, recovering from the stroke, he said, when I was in the hospital, I had a revelation. I said, what was that? He said, as I was there in the hospital for all those weeks, I realized that all these nurses were caring for me day after day, and since they were caring for me, that gave me the right to tell them that I love them. And so I started to do that. To everybody who would come in, I started to say, I love you, and Jesus does too, and I'm so thankful that God is using you to help me. And John said, those nurses, they weren't expecting that. Some of them started to cry. They said, no one says that to us. That's just what I needed to hear. And so I learned that you can be lying on your back in a hospital bed and you can still help people see Jesus by saying those words, Jesus loves you and I do too. Wouldn't that be a great thing for our church to be known for? I told you as I was visiting all these different churches over the past month and I was thinking, what could, what could our church, Christ the King, be, be known for? I, I learned a lot of things. I learned that if people are going to go to church because they want tradition and they want rituals and they want liturgy, do you know where people should go? They should go to the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church does that way better than we do. I saw it. We cannot out-tradition the Catholic Church. There's no way. If people are going to go to church because they want great programs, and they want great kids' activities. And they want great music. Do you know where people should go? To any one of these mega churches that we see all over the place. We cannot out-program or out-event any other church. But you know what we can do? We can say to people, Jesus loves you, and we do too. We can be known as a place that teaches people the, the truth about God's deep love to us and Jesus. We can be a place where we, we love and we care about each other in a personal, in a caring way that, that people don't find in many other places. And so dads, on Father's Day, Jesus loves you, and we do too. And moms and kids and everybody else, Jesus loves you. And we do too. Wouldn't that be a great way for our church to be known? Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to, to love one another. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, on, on Father's Day, if, if being a, a good father or, or even if being a good person dependent on us always trying hard or always doing the right thing, we have a problem. It's because we're sinners. As hard as we try, we can't keep your commands and there's so many days when we hardly try at all. We sin against you a, a thousand times. And yet on Father's Day, you remind us in your word that you are love and that in your love, you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear Father, remind us every day anew of your great love for us. And when we see how loved we are, help us to love one another with your love. May our church, Christ the King, be known for this, that you love us and that we love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Continue by confessing our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand as we confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. 
being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He has sat into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May be seated. One of the ways that we show our, our love to God for his love to us is by giving our, our offerings to him. You notice there's an offering plate as you're leaving church today. You can put your offering in there. You also can, can donate online electronically through our, our website too. Also remember that our offerings to God isn't just our, our money. We can offer to God our, our time and our talents too. Just in my first couple of weeks here, I, I've seen some ways where we could use some, some more volunteers here at Christ the King. If you look on the announcements page, you'll see that there's opportunities to, to mow the lawn and take care of the property outside. There's opportunities to help with cleaning here in the church. And then we always need more people to help with our, our audiovisual, the, the, the people in the back who, who run the screens and, and the microphones. And if you're interested in helping in, in any of those ways, part of your offering to God, please, please talk to me and I'll get you in touch with the, the right people. We go to our God now with our, our prayer of the church, our prayer for, for those in our congregation who especially need Jesus today. We bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord God, it's a blessing to remember that you are our Heavenly Father. Tell us in your word that we can speak to you as boldly and confidently as little children talk to their fathers. So it's trusting in your love to us through Jesus that we pray for, for people among our congregation today. We say a prayer for our brother, John Christ. We're thankful that you're allowing him, little by little, to recover from the stroke that he suffered. It was a blessing for me to see him this past week, to see him up and walking with a walker, to hear that he's ready to, to move on to a, a different facility. Pray that you continue to be with him each day. We ask that you protect him from future strokes. We ask that you give him patience and help him to see your grace to him every day and to continue to, to share your love with the people who are caring for him. But I thank you for the chance to serve as a pastor here at Christ the King. I ask that you bless my people here, my, my ministry here among these people in this community. I ask that you bless us as we together Share your love with each other and with the people around us. Finally, dear Father, we pray for the fathers who are with us today. Dear Lord, our, our world needs more godly Christian fathers. It's not easy to be a man in our society and follow you. Pray that you protect us from the sins and the temptations that are constantly around us. Pray that you lead us to, to sit still and to listen to your word on a regular basis as our source of strength. Pray that you give us courage as we lead our families and our congregation, bless every one of us fathers and keep us close to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're blessed to celebrate the, the Lord's Supper today. So please rise. We'll join in the liturgy on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now have come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of God, and the authority of Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. seen it.
May you go today with God's blessing. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing song.